Hey everybody, my name is Olaya Mialurin and this is O Squared, the show where we do basic math to break down stories that just aren't quite adding up. Today, I wanna to break down the remarks former President Barack Obama made at a Pittsburgh field office to help drive support for the Harris Walls campaign. While speaking to those in attendance, Obama spoke candidly about his frustration with a specific subset of black men who would otherwise be supporting any Democratic nominee, but are reluctant to support Kamala Harris for seemingly arbitrary reasons in Obama's opinion, so arbitrary, in fact, that he believes sexism to be the motivation behind some black men's commitment to finding any reason not to support Kamala Harris, despite the alternative being a raging white supremacist threatening police violence with impunity, in addition to his continued onslaught on marginalized communities and our civil liberties. What Obama specifically said was, quote, my understanding, based on reports I'm getting from campaigns and communities, is that we have not yet seen the same kind of energy and turnout in all quarters of our neighborhoods and communities as we saw when I was running. The lack of enthusiasm for Harris seems to be more pronounced with the brothers. And you were thinking about sitting out? Part of it makes me think, and I'm speaking to men directly, part of it makes me think that, well, you just aren't feeling the idea of having a woman as president. And you're coming up with other alternatives and other reasons for that. Women in our lives have been getting our backs this entire time. When we get in trouble and the system isn't working for us, they're the ones out there marching and protesting. On the one hand, you have somebody who grew up like you, knows you, went to college with you, understands the struggles and pain and joy that comes from those experiences. And on the other side, you have someone who has consistently shown disregard, not just for the communities, but for you as a person." End quote. Obama's comments were clear that he wasn't speaking to all black men, but specifically to the black men who not just support and vote Democrat, but specifically supported and voted for him. He was specifically addressing and interrogating the reason for the difference in the amount of black male support that he, a biracial black liberal man, received versus the amount Kamala Harris, a biracial black liberal woman, is receiving. Obama's comments have expectedly created a lot of discourse, with many black men and women feeling that the comments were correct and timely, and others feeling that Obama's frustrations were misplaced, and that his comments felt like an undeserved reprimanding of black men, in keeping with the Democratic Party's treatment of black men. I understand both sides of the argument in this particular instance. I've spoken about this repeatedly before, but it is true that during election season, both the media and the Democrats began hyperfixating on what is mostly a manufactured issue the black male Republican. There is constant fear-mongering that black men are letting us down, that black men are voting Republican, that black men are some uninformed nuisance group that we have to get a hold of. On the flip side of that, the media and the Democrats love to celebrate the black woman's support and present black women as the saviors and backbones of the Democrats' voter base. And I do agree there was an air of that problematic sentiment present in Obama's remarks. Meanwhile, the reality is that both black women and black men are the Democrats' strongest, largest, and most consistent voter base. Black Americans vote Democrat in higher numbers consistently than any racial demographic in this country. Black Americans are never who cost Democrats an election, neither black men nor women. Let's do the math, shall we? In 2020, 87% of black voters voted for the Democratic candidate, Joe Biden. And when you break that down, 90% of black women voted for Joe Biden and 80% of black men voted for Joe Biden. Now, while 87% of black voters voted for Joe Biden in 2020, compare that to the just 41% of white people that voted for Joe Biden, the just 65% of Latino people that voted for Joe Biden, and the 61% of Asian people that voted for him. Now, let's look at 2016. In 2016, about 89% of black voters voted for the Democratic candidate, Hillary Clinton. When you break that down, 94% of black women voted for Hillary Clinton, and 82% of black men voted for Hillary Clinton. While 89 percent of black voters voted for Hillary Clinton, only 37 percent of white people voted for her, only 66 percent of Hispanic people voted for her, and only 65 percent of Asian people voted for her. Let's look at 2012. In 2012, 93 percent of black voters voted for the Democratic candidate Barack Obama. And importantly, there was record turnout amongst black voters, with black voter turnout surpassing white voter turnout. When you break that down, 96% of black women voted for Obama and 87% of black men voted for Obama. While 93% of black voters voted for Obama, just 39% of white people did, 73% of Asian people voted for him, and 71% of Latino people did. Let's look at 2008. In 2008, 
95% of black voters voted for the Democratic candidate, Barack Obama. When you break that down, 96% of black women voted for Obama and 95% of black men voted for Obama. While 95% of black voters voted for Obama, only 43% of white people did, only 67% of Latino people did, and only 62% of Asian people did. These stats should make a few things abundantly clear. One, Black men and women consistently vote Democrat more than any other group in this country. While it is true that black women are the Democrats' strongest supporters, black men are a close number two. Number two, not only are black voters not costing Democrats elections, they're actually most responsible for securing the wins. So for those reasons, I understand and share the frustration that many black people, specifically black men, have with being scapegoated for Democrats' losses and painted as a regressive group in need of being gotten together, et cetera, et cetera, because it's simply not based in reality. However, I don't think that's what Obama was doing here. Obama was specifically commenting on the difference in the amount of support he received from black men and expressing his concern that this election would be lost, not because black people who vote won't vote for Kamala or because the black men who will vote won't vote for Kamala. He was specifically expressing his concern that Kamala would lose because the black men who turned out to vote for him, but who are looking for every reason under the sun not to turn out to vote for Kamala. I think that's a very specific argument and nuance that is based in reason for Obama. Despite how popular and beloved Obama is and how much we love to say white people and liberals and them love Obama, the truth is that Obama never once won the white vote. Obama won specifically because of the historic voter turnout of black people. He won a similar percentage of the black vote as Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden because the majority of black people who show up to vote always vote Democrat. But way more black people went out to vote for Obama and that's why he won. So Obama is not suggesting that black men who vote aren't voting for Kamala. He's not implying nor failing to understand that black people, including black men, are the Democrats' strongest supporters. That's not what the criticism is or what his frustration is. Obama isn't worried that most black voters won't vote for Kamala. He's worried that there'll be less black voters altogether than he had because less black men are supporting Kamala. And in both of his elections, that record turnout of black voters was essential. So Obama isn't just generally chastising all black men. This isn't Obama chastising black male Republicans either or black men who have never supported the Democratic Party for one reason or the next. He is specifically talking to black men who got up to vote for him, but are now searching for any reason under the sun not to get up and vote for Kamala. And in so many words, Obama is saying that if you were fine with me, you should be fine with Kamala. And the reason he believes a lot of black men who were fine with him, but have a problem with Kamala is at its core because she's a woman. And it would be fundamentally dishonest and divorced from our patriarchal sexist reality Reality, to pretend that there aren't black men working overtime to be against Kamala for non-articulable or unsubstantiated reasons. We aren't just seeing the evidence of this all over the internet and our digital spaces, but we're having those conversations in real life. I would be lying if I said I haven't been gobsmacked listening to several black men I know do nimble gymnastics to tell me why they just don't trust Kamala, but they like Trump. And I agree that black men are not the majority of men doing this. The other racial demographics of men are more guilty of this and that it can be frustrating to have intracommunal conversations in front of all of America because then it seems like black men are being singled out or scapegoated as the problem. But while I think that is often what is happening, I don't think that's what Obama was doing or trying to imply. I think this is one of those times where if the shoe doesn't fit, it's not about you. And for most black men, the shoe doesn't fit, but it does fit some black men. And we need to be able to talk to and about them without everyone getting defensive and taking it as an indictment of black men as a whole. The truth is that while black men are second to black women in their support for the Democratic Party, the percentage of black women who support the Democratic Party has remained steady throughout the 2000s, while the percentage of black men supporting the Democratic Party has declined more and more each election for many different reasons. Some valid, some not. I've seen a lot of written and spoken pieces, not only characterizing Obama's remarks as him reprimanding, admonishing, or criticizing black men as a whole, but suggesting that it's the reason black men either don't or won't or shouldn't support 
Kamala Harris or the Democrats. I disagree with this on all fronts. Obama's trying to focus on reality. If Kamala is anything like him, she won't win the white vote. And she needs high turnout from black voters to secure this election. So if you want Kamala to win, it would be incumbent on you to address those in our community whose reasons for not supporting her aren't as valid as others. Obama wasn't chastising black men who don't want to vote for a former prosecutor or black men who've drawn the line on Gaza, or black men who've long abandoned the Democratic Party. He was specifically addressing those who fall outside of that group and ran to the polls to support him, a fairly moderate status quo biracial black liberal, but now refused to do it for who he clearly sees as his female equivalent in the material respects. He was addressing one particular subset of black men who supported him and likely still support him, for whom he believes are being motivated not to support Kamala out of sexism, because he believes that he was the person most capable of reaching them. And that makes sense to me. Anyway, those are my thoughts. Feel free to share yours in the comments.